I often think about that, Barry, because I feel that the student, the music student today, has an incredible kind of uh, a situation where they have to decide whether they want to make money or make music. Sometimes they are uh, those students who are just so brilliant that they can cross all of the lines and do both, make money and make music. But uh, if you want to make money today and you're young and you're, even if you're a student, uh, then you must uh, acknowledge the, the, the most popular, in quotes, that word, music that we uh, recognize all over the world today, um, which is hip hop. And for those of us who came way, way, way before hip hop, some of us would scratch our heads and say, oh, okay, you know. Uh, I don't think that as a student I could embrace that um, in, in the, when I was a student, if it were around. I'm, I thank God that it was not. But that, at the same time, I recognize that music has to evolve. Everything creative has to evolve. I mean, nobody's doing Michelangelo. You know what I'm saying? And nobody really is trying to be a new Amadeus. Nobody's trying to do that. Um, so we have to do what, what uh, Mozart did and what Michelangelo did and express ourselves as students of the art that we love and worship um, in the fashion that gets us, gives us a chance to relate to people. Can you imagine being a great, brilliant student and not having a chance to say anything or to share anything that you think, anything that you feel, anything that you write? It's just in your head in your heart too maybe, but you don't get a chance to verbalize it or to say it or to sing it or to write it or paint it or dance it. It's, a, it's an incredible kind of um, wonderful, wonderful, I don't know, confusing thing that we live in uh, today as, as artists and creative people, uh, particularly those of, who's, of us who've had good fortune of being um, students of classical, you know, fundamental music and fundamental art and fundamental dance. And there are a lot of people out here uh, who have studied a lot, studied their craft a lot and still study, make a point to take lessons. I take a voice lesson every week and I intend to until I can't find my way to the voice teacher's studio. But um, I think that, you know, you have, to, you have to be confident and you have to know that this is something you're going to do all of your life. I look at people like Leontine Price, you know, we can hear her sing Summertime and all of those other songs that we associate with her uh, in a pop way. But then there's the Leontine that has done La Traviata and Tosca and all of those things. And we won't hear her do that again. Maybe not any time unless we listen to it on, on a recording. Because things happen to you as a, as a person and as a human that prevent that from happening. Then you look at somebody, I'm just scatterbrained minding, mm -hmm. giving you all this, guys. Then you look at somebody like Tony Bennett, you know. I read recently where there was a guy who actually made the Billboard charts who was 90 something, 91 I think, and he's considered the oldest person. So there's no age limit uh, to this thing. There's no, uh, there are no limitations. You can get involved and love it with all your heart and do something with it and, and hopefully your education gives you all of the fundamentals and all of the roots and all of the stuff that you need to stand on because you can never have enough of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't.